In the circuit shown, we're going to figure out all the branch currents using a powerful tool in circuit analysis. Nodal analysis. The idea is simple. We'll find the voltage at each node relative to a common reference point, usually ground, by applying Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL. Once we know those voltages, calculating the branch currents is a piece of cake. We'll be following the standard eight-step process for nodal analysis. Don't worry, it's structured, logical, and once you get the hang of it, super efficient. If you need a refresher on any of the steps, we've got you covered with a detailed tutorial. Check out the link in the description. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. This circuit includes two current sources, but no voltage sources. One is an independent current source, and the other is dependent, meaning its value depends on another current somewhere in the circuit. Now that might sound a little tricky, but here's the good news. No voltage sources actually makes nodal analysis simpler in some ways. We'll take it step by step and keep everything smooth and straightforward. First things first, we need to label all the components and values in the circuit. If they're not already labeled, now's the time to do it. But in our case, everything's neatly labeled already. So step one is done. Let's move on. Step two is to identify all the nodes in the circuit and pick one to be the reference or ground node. So what exactly is a node? It's any point where two or more circuit elements are connected. And here's a key detail. If two points are connected directly without any resistor or source between them, they're considered the same node. Take a close look at the circuit. How many nodes can you find? Pause and count. That's right, four nodes. Now we need to choose one of them to be our reference node. A good strategy is to pick the one connected to the most elements or sources. It makes the math cleaner later on. In this circuit, I'm choosing this node right here. It connects to two, the both current sources and a resistor. So it's a solid choice. But don't stress too much about which one you pick. The final answers, the branch currents, will stay the same no matter what. Only the equations you write along the way might look a little different. All right, with the reference node set, let's keep going. The next step is to assign voltages to other nodes. If we had any voltage sources directly connected to the reference node, we'd use those to label node voltages right away. But in this circuit, there aren't any voltage sources, just current sources, so we'll define the node voltages ourselves. Let's label the remaining nodes as V1, V2, and V3. These represent the voltage at each node relative to ground. With all node voltages labeled and ready to go, we're all set for the next step. Next up, we assign current directions and voltage polarities throughout the circuit. Let's start with the current sources. Their directions are already marked with arrows, so we'll stick with those. In one branch, we've got a three amp independent source, and in another, there's a dependent current source labeled 2IX. That IX is the current through a specific resistor. We'll calculate it soon. Now for the resistors. We'll label the currents through them as I1, I2, and I3. The direction we choose for these currents is completely up to us. Seriously, there's no wrong guess here. If the current actually flows the other way, our answer will just come out negative. That's math's way of nudging us in the right direction. The important thing is consistency. Make sure the voltage polarity across each resistor matches the direction of the current you assumed. That keeps your calculations tidy and avoids mix-ups later. All right, currents and polarities are set. Let's move on. In step five, it's time to bring in Ohm's law to express the currents through each resistor. Quick refresher. Ohm's law tells us that current equals the voltage difference across a resistor divided by its resistance. Let's apply that to each resistor in the circuit. For the two ohm resistor, the current IX is V1 minus V2 divided by two. For the four ohm resistor between V1 and V3, the current I1 is V1 minus V3 divided by four. For the eight ohm resistor between V2 and V3, the current I2 is V2 minus V3 divided by eight. And for the other four ohm resistor, which is connected from V2 to ground, the current I3 is simply V2 divided by four. Now we've got IX, I1, I2, and I3 all written in terms of the node voltages, V1, V2, and V3. Now it's time to apply Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL, 
to each node in the circuit. At the first node, we see that three amps flow in while I1 and IX flow out. So the equation is three equals I1 plus IX. At the second node, current IX flows in while I2 and I3 flow out. That gives us IX equals I2 plus I3. Finally, at the third node, both I1 and I2 flow in and two times IX flows out. So the equation is two times IX equals I1 plus I2. Now we substitute each of those currents using the expressions we got from Ohm's law. Plug all of those into the KCL equations and we're left with three equations and three unknowns, V1, V2, and V3. Now comes the fun part, solving for the node voltages. To solve the system of equations, we'll use some good old fashioned algebra. Either substitution or elimination works. First, I add equation one and equation three. When we do that, something nice happens. V3 cancels out. That gives us a new relationship between V1 and V2. Let's call that equation four. Next, I add equation two and equation three. Again, V3 drops out and we get a second relationship between V1 and V2. We'll call this one equation five. Now here's the clever part. By adding equation four and equation five, we eliminate V1 completely. That lets us solve directly for V2 and we get V2 equals 2.4 volts. With V2 in hand, we plug it back into either equation four or equation five to find V1. And that gives us V1 equals 4.8 volts. Finally, using the values for V1 and V2, we substitute back into one of our original equations to solve for V3. The result, V3 equals negative 2.4 volts. Now that all the node voltages are known, we're ready to find the actual branch currents. All we have to do is plug the values of V1, V2, and V3 into the current equations we set up earlier. Let's do it. For Ix, that's V1 minus V2 divided by two. That's 4.8 minus 2.4 divided by two, which gives us 1.2 amps. Next, I1 is V1 minus V3 divided by four. That's 4.8 minus negative 2.4 divided by four, which gives 1.8 amps. Now for I2, we take V2 minus V3 divided by eight, 2.4 minus negative 2.4 divided by 8, and that gives us 0.6 amps. And finally, I3 is just V2 divided by 4, which is 2.4 divided by 4, giving 0.6 amps as well. And that's it. We've successfully used nodal analysis to solve for every branch current in the circuit. Even with a dependent source in the mix, the process stays straightforward if you follow the steps and a little bit of algebra goes a long way. Want to see how this compares to mesh analysis? Check out our videos on both nodal and mesh analysis. Links are down in the description. See you there.